asbestos with another book. This one is about Julie Crumb, Fearless Jockey. Around the final turn and heading home, it's Consider the Lily. The voice booms out of the loudspeaker at Belmont Park. The winner by a length and a half is Consider the Lily. This is the story of the world's greatest female jockey, Julie Crumb. Growing up, Julie Crone grew up on a horse farm in Eau Claire, Michigan. She was only two years old when her mother first put her on a horse. Right away, Julie fell in love with riding. Julie's mother was once a Michigan state champion rider. She wanted her daughter to learn the right way to ride. Every morning, Julie and her mom woke up early and practiced riding skills together. Then Julie would have, have her breakfast, take a shower, and catch the bus for another day of school. With her mother's help, Julie quickly became a very good rider. By the time she turned 13, Julie was an excellent rider. She had already won several horse shows competing against riders twice her age. When it came to riding, Julie was also quite a daredevil. Her favorite trick was to race straight for the barn, riding bareback, standing up. When her head was just about to hit the barn, she would suddenly do the splits and land seated on her horse. Julie had lots of fun doing tricks, but her real dream was to become a jockey. Chasing her dream. At 15, <coughs> Julie decided she was ready to chase her dream. She moved to Tampa, Florida, home of the Tampa Bay Downs racetrack, and lived with her grandparents. One day, she went to the racetrack to apply for a job as a jockey. When the guard at the front gate would not let her in, Julie jumped the fence. Once inside, Julie met a trainer named Jerry Pace. She began to show him photographs of her riding skills. Mr. Pace was impressed by this spunky kid and decided to give her a try. Within five weeks, under his guidance, Julie Crone won her first race as a jockey. meeting a friend. Julie worked the next several months as an apprentice or student jockey at Tampa Bay Downs. One day she went into one of the offices to fill out some papers. The secretary told Julie she had seen her race and began to offer some writing advice. What makes you so smart? asked Julie. Why, you're just a secretary. Just then the woman rolled out from behind her desk in a wheelchair. Her name was Julie Snelling. She was once a very good jockey until she fell during a race. The fall left her with her legs paralyzed, never able to race again. As they shook hands, neither guessed they would soon become best friends. Julie Snellings liked Julie Crone and, they, and thought she had a talent. She found Julie an agent who in turn helped Julie ride faster horses in bigger events. Helping her new friend, Julie Snelling, began to feel important again. After her accident, she felt very lonely. Other jockeys avoided her because they thought she was bad luck. However, Julie Crone wasn't going to let any superstitions get in the way of their friendship. On August 25th, four years to the day of Snelling's accident, Julie wore Snelling's old riding outfit and won three races at the Delaware Park Racetrack. Snelling's was thrilled. The 25th of August used to be such a sad day for me, but now Julie's made it my lucky day. Reaching the top. Many of the jockeys did not like riding against Julie. They believed the sport of horse racing was no place for a young woman. However, in the years that followed, Julie showed the world what a great rider she was. Julie Crone became the first woman to win a riding title at a major track, winning the Atlantic City riding title in 1982, and again in 1983. She was the first woman to win five races in one day, and was the leading money winner from 1987 through 1990 at both Monmouth and Meadowlands racetracks in New Jersey. By 1987, Julie had become the number one female rider in the nation. She was famous, appearing on several TV shows. 
Julie Crone was even invited to, to the White House to meet the President of the United States. On June 5, 1993, Julie Crone galloped straight into the record books when she won the Belmont, Belmont States, riding a horse named Colonial Affair. She became the first woman in history to capture a leg of the Triple Crown. Fighting back. On August 30, 1993, Julie had a terrible accident at Saratoga Racetrack. Riding a horse named Seattle Way, she came off the final turn and was ready to make her move toward the finish line. Suddenly, another horse cut right in front of Julie's horse. The legs of both horses tangled and they crashed. Julie was thrown off her horse and lay helplessly on the ground. Another rider tried to avoid her, but it was too late. Julie was trampled. Luckily for Julie, the protective vest she was wearing saved her life. She spent the next three weeks in a hospital bed. Julie suffered many injuries from her accident. For nine months, she was away from the sport she loved. During this time of recovery, she often became depressed, wondering if she would ever have the strength to race again. Julie Crone was a fighter. On May 26, 1994, Riding her favorite racehorse of all, consider, consider the Lily, Julie once again raced at New York's Belmont Park. As she raced toward the finish line, the crowd began to shout, Come on, Julie! Julie Crone was back in the saddle and, and the winner's circle again. Today she is known throughout the world as the greatest female jockey of all time. After my accident, Julie was just the kind of person I needed around me says Julie Snellings. She has given me the courage to enjoy life again.